So who's going to introduce the activity? Okay, so um, hi everyone. My name is Mariah, and I am going to talk, walk us through a third identity exploration activity. And this one is called Explore a Stereotype. Um, have a mind sharing the screen so we can see the instructions. So for this activity, what we did was um, we thought about a stereotype that has strongly affected us personally in some way. And then we uh, wrote about it, uh, focusing on feelings or stories or memories that this brought to mind, thinking about why we picked it, how it affected us, and then trying to sort of end with uh, how can this, you know, how can this exploration move us forward towards connecting with the change, changing our behavior in some way that uh, leads us in a more positive direction, hopefully to breaking down some of your type too, right? So that's what we just finished. We spent five to seven minutes on this, but of course, if you're doing this um, with your students in a class, you'll probably need a little bit more time than that or you could have your students do this at home and come to class prepared. And then what we're going to do with share, and of course the sharing is optional. We don't want to force anybody what they've written. It could be for them. But for people that are willing to share, it can a useful way to see even inside. So, um, and we can stop screen. Sorry about that I guess I got kicked out. I'm not sure if you, how far you got with my ex explanations or directions. Well, we heard you, but your voice was turned off a little bit. So, um, is it okay now? Yeah. Do you want to just repeat yeah. it really quickly? Yeah. Okay. So, um, for explore a stereotype activity. Basically, what we do is we pick a stereotype that that we feel has strongly affected us in some way. So, and then we think about, you know, we write about it and reflect on it a little bit. We talk about why we uh, why we picked it, how it affects us, how we feel. Maybe there's some stories or memories connected with it. And then we also uh, sort of end our little reflective writing by thinking about what could I now do differently now that I've thought through the exploration and how could this, you know, differently in, in the sense of how might I respond in a way that is maybe more intentional going forward and that might lead to some kind of being the change, right, towards that stereotype. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we spent five to seven minutes writing about that and now we are going to um, share with each other to see if we can get a few more insights. Um, would anybody like to start? Well, I can go ahead and start. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about being American. I have to say that I grew I'm up in the United States. Oh. So I can Heather hear Heather well. Yeah. You can or you can't? We can. can. No, we can hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Somebody said something and I, so yeah. I stopped. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me start over. Um, I have to say that I am American. I grew up in the United States and I've been living in Germany for over 20 years. And I'm going to focus, you can say a lot of things about stereotypes and Americans, right? Just like for any country, but I'm going to focus specifically on language. All right. For one thing, um, I am a foreign language teacher, so I teach English. Um, and I guess I'll start with that. So it affects people's perception of me. And it is a emo 
in most circumstances, a bonus, right? Because I have the, the native speaker bonus, right? They're like, oh, here's a native speaker and you know she speaks English well. So there's that. <laughs> um, it can be slightly negative, but doesn't usually happen if people expect me to know everything about the English language, who can possibly know everything about a language, right? Um, but normally that's, that's not a problem. And just like, go look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> you have a dictionary. <laughs> Um, and generally speaking, I would say often in the past and also today, students are usually grateful um, to have me as their teacher. So I would say it's a positive thing in terms of language teaching. What can be a little bit less um, positive is when I am speaking in, in German, I'm fluent in German, it's not a problem for me, but of course, I shouldn't say, of course, but I have an American accent, period, okay? You can tell immediately when I'm speaking in German that I am American, or at least that I that English is my native language. They don't always guess America right away. They sometimes say, oh, Great Britain, like, no, America. Um, but it can be very annoying when, some, when a German hears my accent and immediately switches into English because they think, because that person thinks that I can't speak German. Um, and doing this reflection, I guess I could maybe politely, I mean, usually my response is to keep talking in German, but maybe I can say something politely like, you know, I'm here in Germany and I prefer to speak in German with you because this is where I live. I'm not sure how to put it, how to phrase it politely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing that Heather. Um, yeah. Probably of us can relate I, I, in different ways to this um, nativeness issue, uh, whether it's for being an English speaker or being a native English and not being perceived as one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, or the speaker is, is somehow bad. looks like you might not be able to hear me again. I don't know yeah, why. Your voice is cutting up a lot. And my internet. So, yeah, I don't know if you turned your camera off. You hear me Barely. Cutting off a lot. Um, yeah, so I, I guess what I you were saying, switch your I could camera jump in off. here. I wanted uh, to, to comment on what Heather was saying. Um, I actually did my thesis on that, on, on stereotyping that students have for native speaking uh, language teachers. And um, it was very interesting to do. And, and so um, I kind of use some of the typical stereotypes and try to, to confuse them. So having um, teachers that look in a certain way that they've associated a specific appearance to Americans. And then when they start speaking, they speak in an accent that isn't an American accent. So they're not actually American or they're not actually foreign. Um, and then people like myself that look Egyptian but have an accent. And then they're like, oh, they don't know who these people are from and you know what country are they from they have an American or Canadian accent but they look Egyptian and it, it, it is because of all the stereotyping that you mentioned and um, them feeling that a native speaking English teacher should know everything and that's why they want native English speaking teachers yeah. but then they realize that a lot of their teachers aren't but still have the knowledge and the things that yes. they're looking for in their teacher isn't actually necessarily only related to that, but there are a lot of different other qualities. Um, so the native uh, English speaking teacher this, and that's what my research proved, but um, it, students started to think in certain groups that I did uh, about that stereotype, you know, that maybe th this is a stereotype and maybe that isn't actually necessarily what I'm looking for in a teacher only. And yes. so it was quite interesting what you say, like it, it really relates also to um, the classroom and, and our students and, and that. So it was very interesting listening to your story. You know, I've, I've been thinking also more, there's like, 
Um, I'm also an English teacher. And one of the things that I thought a lot about lately, because I've gone through a similar process of thinking about this native speakerness thing. And what I've done a lot lately is I've tried to deliberately bring in a lot of material. Um, for example, TED Talks by people who don't have what sounds like a native speaker accent and, 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 and talk about that explicitly with students and sort of bring in that whole idea of world Englishes and things like that. Um, and, and hopefully that can start to help break down some of these, these uh, stereotypes. Um, and along like making me think, you know what, I probably have bias towards native speaker too, since that's the world we've been raised in. And so how can I think about helping other people feel comfortable with their own accent? Do you know what I mean? Like those kind of things. Um, I've you also that. see now in IELTS exams, for example, with the listening there, they have speakers that have different accents so that they kind of uh, also emphasize the fact that an English speaker doesn't have to have a specific accent. So they always use different accents in the IELTS test as well. And, and so, in real life, you're learning English so you can communicate with everybody, not so you can communicate exactly. with native speakers. Most people who speak English in the world aren't native speakers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So many good teachers who are not native speakers of English. Mm -hmm. So many good teachers, yes. Yeah. People are not necessarily learning English um, to talk with other people of yeah. who are speakers either, right? Exactly. Right. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.